once more. And do the same thing, breathing down into the low back and pelvis. And just feeling that weightedness, releasing the muscles of your thighs, softening into the bones, all the way down through your feet. And then very gently start to scoop the abdominals down and in. Lightly draw your stomach towards the spine and start to engage, almost like you're going to hover. You're not actually going to, but as if you're going to hover your forelimbs up off the ground, keeping the head and the spine really heavy. And then continue to feel that contraction now. Bend your right elbow, bend the left knee, right knee, excuse me, in almost like a kind of puppet shape. You're going to slide it along the floor, contract that right side, and try to stay as on the ground as much as you can. And then slowly re-extends. It's called the X exercises. It's again a modern dance warm-up. And then you're going to bend the left elbow, bend the left knee, bring them together on the side of your body, and stretch the other side out. And then you use your core strength to come back out to that X. And just do that three more times, back and forth, curling in. And then using your body weight and extend that back out. And again, as you curl into your side, feel that other side stretch and then lightly re-engage the stomach to extend your back out. And just move like that a few more times, feeling both the contraction of the obliques on one side, but also the extension to the waist and the hip flexors on the other side. And just feeling their relationship to the ground this day. Notice what feels heavy and that feels relieving, what feels heavy and maybe feel burdensome. And then next time you bring yourself over to the right, you're going to continue to curl all the way around into a tight little ball, a little fetal position on the right side. Pull your abdominals down and in as you bring your elbows and knees together. And then tracing the floor with your left fingertips and your left toes, slowly re-extend all the way back out into that X shape. And just being again here, as connected to the ground as you can, and do that on the other side, contract the left. And contract the right, roll onto your side. Take a moment there to establish that squeeze in. And then trace the floor with your fingers and toes on the right as you extend back out. And do that two more times, curling in on the right, contracting all the way in. Melt yourself back into the ground. Feel almost like Da Vinci's Vitruvian man, that feeling that you're tracing around the perimeter of a circle with your fingers and your toes. And just observing as you do that, how you can really get fire from your core body to motivate the movement of your limbs. And then next time you're over to the right side, go ahead and stay on the right, take your time. And then extend your arms and legs out and you're gonna balance on the right side and stretch out into that axe on the side and then contract back in, curling your abdominals into the spine, and then melt back all the way into your X shape. And then left side, contract the abdominals, curl in on your left. Stay there, extend your arms and legs out, long balancing on the side. Contract back in, and melt back out into your X. One more time, contract to the right, curl all the way over. Keep drawing the abdominals in as you bounce, stretch it out. If it feels okay on your back, stretch back a little bit with your fingers and toes. We yawn up in the front, and then the stomach kicks back and contract back in, and then melt back all the way to the floor. And last one, swing it around to the left. Extend arms and legs. Big stretch back, balancing on your side. Contract back in, and then melt all the way back into that shape. And just take a moment there now for that movement now to establish that anchor. Press down through your heels and parallel your legs a little bit more. And then from there, you're going to dig into your heels and let your whole body rock by almost like you're pointing and flexing the feet as if you're pushing on a gas pedal and then pulling your foot away from it. And so that should cause that digging of the heels into the ground. The whole body to just bobble. And let your head, your limbs, almost like a a bear scratching its fur on a tree, that feeling of just massaging the fascia, the bones, the muscles into the ground. And when that feels sufficient, let that resolve and take another breath in your passive X shape now. 
and then walk the feet a little closer together. Swing the arms down by your side and gather the right knee in towards your chest. And it's really easy on the back and the hips, taking small circles. Tune into the feeling of your left side, especially the back side of the pelvis by the sacrum. Is there weight on that side or is it lifted? I mean, you can start to assess where, you know, your, your maybe pelvic instability may be coming from. And then open the right knee out to the side. Keep anchoring down to the left side from hip to armpit, all the way down to that left side. And here you're welcome to explore, move the ankles around, move your feet a little. And then bring the right knee back up to center. Cross into a twist. Right hand extends out, left arm guides your knee over. And you can always hop the left hip back up and under you a little bit more. The right foot can stay perched on the, on the opposite thigh or to the ground. Three arm circles. Right arm goes up and across, down and open. Just taking big, full, luxurious breath. And that same sensation of letting your body really drop off into the ground. And then reverse those arm circles after three. And then feeling as you do this, where again, your body is resistant, where there is mobility already present. And then bring your arm back out to shoulder level and take the final breath there in and out. And then float your knee all the way back up to center. Square your hips off if you've moved them. And then slowly with the hands behind your right thigh, extend the right heel up and point and flex the top foot. Push your right thigh bone into your hands, almost like your legs trying to escape rather than pulling it in. And feel the sacral nerves and the muscles around the buttocks and low back starting to get a little more traction and release. Lightly press your left thigh down, your leg is lightly parallel. And then from there, taking the right leg up, keeping it there, push your palms down by your sides. And then very lightly, you're going to take some leg circles, go across your body, and then up and open to the right. So to the left, down, open. And make sure that when you do this, that your lower back doesn't lift. So it might be more vertical to the ceiling, and using the leg less and more the core to find the control as well as the swing. And then do that one more time, just getting into the hips and reverse that. Keep a little bit of turnout, and then exhale, swing it up using your stomach. Press down to the back of the arms. And then try to feel a weightedness to the floating ribs, connecting the ribs and hips like a set of suspenders. Good. And do that one more time, the single leg circles, just warming up your leg. Good. And then hold on to your right leg one more time. And if you'd like now, walk up a little higher, curl your forehead up to meet your shin. Now kick the right side of your buttocks down towards your left heel. Yeah, really square off that standing leg a little bit more. Good. And then lift your body to your leg, vice versa, and lower back down. Lower the right leg to join the left. And just take a moment to feel the difference there. Maybe shape the neck a little side to side. And then narrow the feet, knees, draw the left knee in. And just start with your simple knee circles. Holding onto the leg. Seeing how much you can trigger that sense of ease in the hip flexors. Feeling a blood flow and just energy flow through the pelvis, your roots. And then open the knee out to the left. Right hand can anchor your opposite hip down. Just circle the ankles a few times in each direction. And then once more here, how much weight is on that right hip? Try to make it as even as possible, right to left. Fold the floating ribs into your back. Good. Lift your left knee back up and cross your leg all the way over to the right. And again, you can always adjust that right hip under you a little bit more and prop the foot onto the opposite thigh if that feels better on your back. Circle the left arm up across, down and around. Three circles with your left arm. And just feel, again, the almost luxury of just laying on the ground and taking these gentle, easy movements. And then reverse those circles and just observe how more and more you can allow your body to surrender to that weight of gravity. There was a quote from a dancer that I read recently that said, you're never doing a solo, that you always have a relationship, you're dancing with the ground. And I think that that applies to, to yoga as well as dance or anything really, because we are on a gravitational field. So just thinking about that relationship between yourself and your environment to enhance the experience. 
and then bring your left knee all the way back up. Square your hips off and take your hands behind that left thigh and slowly reach your heel up to the ceiling. And again here, maybe even take a peek. Try to level your left hip with the right hip point. So across the front of the hips as, as even as you can and kick the left leg into your hands as you point and flex the top ankle. Again here, opening up through the sciatic and all the various sacral nerves. Stretching into the back of your leg, feeling the connection between the feet, the plantar fascia, and all the way down to the legs, the back of your body, all the way up to the back of the neck, and behind the eyes. And then keep that gentle squaring and anchoring of the right leg down. Press your palms down by your sides. Stretch your fingertips towards the toes like you're sliding your chest up the mat away from your hips. And then go across your body to the right, leg circles, and open around to the left, or the right, left, excuse me. And then as you do this, notice again here where the wobbles may be. And contracting the abdominals and working on having the back and the hips keep you stable. And that top leg can just be free like a lasso. And after six of them, reverse. Lightly point your toes and find the external rotation from the head of your throat, thigh, excuse me, to get you out of your hip flexors and more to the inner leg. Soften the ribs, deepen your breath. Good, and then after six of them, hold on to the left leg one more time. Pull yourself up, kicking your left hip down towards your right heel. Lift your chest up towards your foot. And then lower that back down. Lower the left leg down to join the right. Good. And then bend both knees in towards your chest and just give your lower back a little rock from side to side. Good. Knees to chest, actively pull up on us and knees in, tailbone down. Flex your feet a little bit here, yes. And then press your arms down by your sides. As you exhale, you're gonna circle the knees around. Keep them tight together to the right, left, and then center. Low corkscrew action of the legs and then reverse that. And do that each time, changing directions. And then again here, explore where does your lower back want to arch. Try to keep it pretty anchored down from the stomach and the hip line. And this is a great exercise for the relief of your lower back and focusing more on the side to side motion than rather than going away if it's hard to maintain this. Squeeze those knees together. Good, and do that one more set in each direction. Good. And then bringing yourself back to center. As you stretch your legs up to the ceiling now, turn your toes out a little bit, push your heels together, and then do the same thing with the legs straight. Again, unless that bothers the lower back, then you can always keep the knees bent. And really haul the weight of your legs up from your stomach, switching directions each time. Anchor through the back of the arms and then pull the feet to your face without lifting your tailbone as best you can. Really zip those thighs together from your inner legs. Good. And then last set, right and left. Good. And then from there, bend your knees. Just hug the knees in one more time. Give that a little rock. And then hands behind the head, one palm over the other. As you exhale, curl the upper body up and just go for a little crisscross abdominals. Extend one leg out as you bend the other and you bring the opposite elbow to it. Now come back to that feeling like we were just doing, really motivating from the back. Pulling the abdominals in to keep your pelvis pretty stable. And then try to lift and spiral your upper body up towards the knee. Good. And then breathe like big bellows. Just really ring out the lungs. Flattening the lower abdominals. Do that two more times each side. And then bring both knees together. Elbows to touch the knees. And then head and feet release. Rolling bridges. Walk your feet a little bit further away from you. And again, take a peek. Make sure the knees and the feet are hip distance apart. And then lift your arms up alongside your ears, but almost like you're giving your ceiling high five here. You're not letting the hands just flop back and the ribs lift. So push your hands up as high as you need to really engage the upper abdominals. Uh, and then keep that feeling as you press the waistline to the ground. Now stretch down into your feet like you're trying to pull the butt and the heels together to fire up the hamstrings. Slowly roll your hips up as the arms come down alongside your body, either to hip level or you can press them to the floor. 
and then roll back down, pull your pelvis towards the back of the knees and arms go back as the hips come down, articulating vertebrae by vertebrae. Same thing, tailbone curls up. Work that side to side balance as you lift your hips, press your arms down, and then think of pulling your hips away from your lower back as you ripple back down slowly. Go three more like that, keeping the head neutral, looking straight up to the ceiling, chest rolls open at the top, and then drag your pelvis away from the lower back. Really press into the feet like you're pressing into sand, pressing into making a footprint. And you wanna to try to make that footprint even, big toe to little toe, inner corner to outer heel. And then last time, come up into Sektu Bandhasana. And if it feels good for you today, walk up onto the shoulders and interlace your fingers. If you need more room for your lower back, you can always pop the heels up and just really stretch the whole front side. And then let go of the arms, separate the hands and roll down super slow. And let the tail move, create a natural curve for the lower back. And then knees come into the chest. And then Yogi's Choice, either rock forward and back on the spine or side to side to bring you all the way up to sit. Swing your legs back or find your way into Chaturanga. Step or hop it back, plank position, establish your plank. And then taking it down to the ground, exhale. Low cobra, point your toes and lift your chest up, take a deep breath in. And then ripple back down and stretch that out. And here, spiral your inner thighs toward one another and press your little toes down. Now tilt the pubic bone down your stomach up as you lift into cobra. See if that helps the lower back. And do that one more time. Hands press down in line with the rib cage. Pull yourself forward, making it really small is fine. Yeah, good. And then lower yourself back into child's pose, but feel the heads of the shoulders engage. Your rib cage pull away from the floor. And smoothly sit that all the way back. You can always keep the head lifted if that feels better on your spine. But little by little, as the back unravels, let your head fall to the floor. And here now, feel that relationship between your arms and your back, whatever it means to them. Push the floor away and press the mat away with your hands to draw your hips a little further back to the heels. And then walk the hands over to the right side, crossing the left hand over the right, and take three deep breaths into the ribs cage. Spin your heart a little bit more towards the right knee, and then pull the left to the back. And after three breaths, switch sides. And just take stock. What is it that you bring with you to your practice? And then walk your hands back to center. Rise up onto all fours, cat and cow. Take a moment to align your arms and legs. And then again, nice and easy if it feels like a lot in your lower back. As you arch, think more away rather than up with your head and hips. And then push the floor away and really ground through that length in the tailbone under by pulling up from the oblique from the lower stomach. Keep the stomach that engaged as you reach your hips away rather than up. Create some traction, stretch of the abdominal muscles. And then exhale, push the floor away and round it. Get your head really very good. Then one more time, just that very careful, conscientious rippling. And then as you round your back, keep your stomach in and wag the head and tail from side to side. Come back to neutral. Think of hugging your inner thighs and like there's a block there. Left leg out, right arm forward. Inhale and exhale down. Bring your elbow and knee together once. And then place the hand and foot down. Your knee, excuse me. And then do the other side. Right leg extends, left arm out. Hold there for a breath in and out. Establish the lift in your torso. And then elbow and knee together. Inhale back out. Hand and foot down. And just switching side to side. Three more sets. Right arm, left leg. Elbow and smoothly working that oppositional diagonal of balance and strength. Firing up the back line. And then working that graceful dance-like coordination between the movement of the limbs and even that careful consideration of when the hand and the feet can touch maybe at the same time. And once more here, what is your relationship with the ground? 
And then just watch the heads of the shoulders that they're still rolling down the back. Good. Good. And then next time your hand and knee are down, go ahead and tuck the toes under, walk the hands a little forward, maybe turn down and a little bit wider. Yeah, and then press that up and back into Adho into Downward Dog. And just take a breath here, just to pedal the feet and do whatever you need to, especially if this is the first down dog of the day. And then walk the feet a little closer in, hug those shoulders into the back, pull up from the stomach and rib cage, press back with the sits bones. Raise the right leg up, bend at the knee, and open up your right hip over the left. Now really work that tailbone staying long and the left leg, you're not dumping into the outside of that thigh. Pull your left hip towards the midline. Good. And then right leg extends, knee to nose, exhale, bring that in. Kick it up and back. And then just nice and easy, right foot forward, walk your stance out to hip distance apart. And just spend the first couple of breaths here just shifting forward and back. You can lift up onto the fingertips or do what you need just to warm up your legs. And then see if you can a little bit here, Tom, rotate that right thigh inward a little bit. Mm -hmm, exactly. And see if by squeezing in with the inner thigh, that hopefully creates a little more space in the back of the sacrum, right? Yeah, good, good. And then continue to feel that sensation now. As you inhale, go ahead and raise the right, left, right arm, excuse me, up and do easy twists. And then exhale, peeling back down, bring your hands to the floor, we go side to side. And then bend from the left elbow, open the chest, reach your left arm up, and then bend from the elbow and trace your fingers down. So it starts by pulling the elbow up, and then you unfurl the hand. And then it starts like your fingers are tracing down to bring it to the ground. And left arm bend, open to the slide, and then bring that back down. And one more set, and again, feel that internal rotation and the lifting up from the pelvic floor. Good, and then lower that down, make that even. And then bringing the hands down, light and easy, stretch and bend the front leg three times. And just only go as far as your body's asking for. And that same thing for the internal rotation. Yes. We have a winner. That's a big difference, isn't it, right? So it's, again, allowing the back of the pelvis to open by finding the internal rotation to the front of the thigh. Good. And then from there, we find your, your plank position. Either stay there or take a long Chaturanga push up, up and down, control, and then back to downward facing dog. Wag the tail a little there as you need to. And then walk the feet a little closer in and together and really drive up and back, lifting your kneecaps to send your thigh bones back. Soften the shoulders into the sides of their sockets and pull the floating ribs up and in. Left leg lifts, bend at the knee, and dog on fire head range. Find your opening of your hip and your stretch there. Now tune into that same relationship of the right leg and the outer part of your right thigh will be pulling back and into midline a little bit more. Good, left leg extends, knee to nose once, lift to bring you forward. Big kick up and back, and then that same action, step your foot smoothly between the hands. And again, separate your feet at distance and establish here what's new on this side, right? That feeling in your back. Leg maybe rotating in and up from the inner thigh. Again, playing with the shifting or any movements here just to warm up your hips. Establish Padabon, bend the front foot. Good, nice. Mm -hmm. And again, just noticing how different right one side is from the other. All right, and then that same thing, feeling here, the lift of the floor of your pelvis, send your chest forward. And then three sets of twists. Left elbow bends, left arm extends, bend to the elbow, and then slink the fingertips to the ground. Right elbow bends, extend, unfurl the fingers, and then curl that and trace that back down. Do that two more times, try to keep the pelvis steady, just like when we were doing the Pilates work on the mat and try to find the rotation and freedom from the mid trunk up and above. The legs are really stable and strong from the feet pushing into the floor to the weight of your pelvis lifting away from the ground. And last one. Good. And then once your hands are both down, straighten and bend the front leg three times, modify Parshvatanasana. Check out the alignment exactly at the back ankle and foot. 
Mm -hmm. Good, good. What I love about alignment is it's almost like the detective that figures out the crime, right? It's like if we adjust those things, how much that actually can enhance the experience. So go ahead and step that back and then lengthen out through the lower back, chest lifts. And again, your chaturanga push up, lower, lift, and back to downward dog. So that right leg lifts, inhale. Step your right foot forward right away. Lower the back knee on Janae Austin. And from the floor, you're going to reach your fingertips forward. The palms will face forward as the arms go up and back. And then cactus the elbows back. Look up if you like. Stretch your arms forward. And now swing the arms back, down, and around. And like a wave, let that cascade you all the way down to the ground. And now vinyasa, if you're ready for it. Plank into chaturanga or upward dog. Lift up through the armpits and reach out through the inner ankles. And then exhale back to downward dog. I'm going to do this flow three times each side. So left leg up, left foot forward, low lunge. From the floor in front of you, like you're raking through the sand with your fingers, lift up. Take a little bounce, elbows bend, back, extend. And then they sweep forward, up, and around. Let your body respond to that and flow it back to plank. Move through your vinyasa. Watch the heads and the shoulders don't collapse. So keep the head and shoulders just a little bit further back. When you lower to your push-up. Right leg up, right foot forward. Take your time, but do see if you can find an efficiency. Bend, stretch. Swing from behind. Feel that wave cascade you down. Vinyasa. Push the floor away with all ten fingertips. Practicing hasta banda here. Left leg. Step it through. And remember, the essence of vinyasa, the word literally translates to place in a specific manner. But yes, we've adopted this kind of poetic idea of movement and the breath in marriage and coordination. But still remember, think at the root of that, there is that awareness of technique. Last set, right left, step it forward. Swing forward to lift. Bend, stretch, cactus. Swing from behind you. Circle up and around. Feel that easy body weight starting to take over the movement. Chaturanga up dog. Good. And reach all the way back from the hips. Left leg, last side. Lift, bend, stretch. Circle from behind. And vinyasa, starting to feel how the heat now is building. What that is, rinsing out, opening up. Good, and back in the down dog. And just take a little sway of the pelvis side to side. Good, come back to center. You can either walk or hop your feet to the top of the mat. Feet open, hip distance apart. And just take a couple of deep demi plies here, bending and stretching your legs. Keeping, again, that internal spiral of the thighs. Not knocking the knees together. Still maintaining that parallel. Good. And then let the next one roll you to stand. Bend your knees, roll it up. Easy shoulder roll. Send that into a gentle body wave. Button head sticks back and then curls under. And just ripple through the spine. And again, this can be pretty small if it feels like too much for your back. But really feel, again, that relationship of the feet. Think of like when a basketball player is going to make like a jump shot. There's that kind of coiling energy and then extension. That same idea from the feet here. Now add your arms. And still in that body weight. Maybe the head and the hips can have a relationship to create that suspension. The arms are pretty soft. Let the next one resolve. to and circle the arms down. Close your eyes. And it's not after all that movement, let yourself settle. Good, and then turn to, if you're comfortable where you are, you have room side to side, you can stay there. Otherwise, find a position so that you can come into your parallel plies. You want to try to keep your hips right under you when you bend your knees. So the heels don't lift, and you really try to keep that feeling of pushing the floor away with your toes and with the balls of the feet. So exactly, you can take a look and see. Again, that's the great thing about video, right? You can take a look and see 
where your alignment is. So keep the heels on the ground. So only bend exactly. And then push down into the balls of the feet as you stretch your legs out. Uh-huh. Good. Okay, now keeping that quality, now we're going to add the port de bras. Again, the port de bras means movement of the arms. Circle, create a circle with the arms like your fingertips are magnetically attracted. Now you're going to bend your knees, bring your arms up to chest height. And as you straighten your plane, the arms come back down. Do that same idea, but your arms are going to go into a high V up. And then straighten, push them down from the armpits. And you alternate back and forth. Bend, fifth in front. Extend, high V, bend the knees. Good, now add that C curve. As you bend your knees, your tailbone comes under, your body goes forward a little bit. And you straighten that up as you extend your legs. Now high release, the chest lifts as you bend your knees. You look up a little, keep your tailbone under. And then push the floor away and stretch. Two more like that, contract forward. Stack that back up. And again, make sure the feet are hip distance, even in the sun plane. Good, and one more time. Breathe in. Feel a sense of lightness under the arms. It's like your arms are floating in the water. Lift. Good, now grand plie. Same start. Keep your body really vertical. Now only let the heels lift because you absolutely have no other choice. Hover, you don't come all the way down. Tailbone under, stomach and chest back. And now start to lift yourself back up. Push your heels to the ground as soon as you can. Arms come down. Now as you extend your arms to your high V, you lift into releve. Heels lift. Maybe a little high extension. And then lower the heels, lower the arms. Two more times. Grand plie parallel. So you can take a peek. Imagine there's that magnetic block between the knees and inner thighs. Keep them nice and parallel. Push the floor away. Bum under. And then as you straighten the legs, arms come up into a high V and maybe a little chest extension. Good, last one, lower the arms, make a circle as your arms come forward, the shoulders stay down. And just feel that smooth elevator movement. Heels come down as soon as possible. And then lift and lower that back down. Good. From there, turn your feet out one foot at a time and come into first position. Heels together, toes apart. Same idea, plie forward, heels stay together, and then straighten your legs. Keep feeling like a corkscrew of the thighs to straighten. And then plie, high release. And then straighten, pull in from those arms. And again, plie, keep your body vertical, arms forward. Squeeze the heels together, stretch. Think lifting up out of the hips. And then plie, push the floor away. And then again, feeling like you're lifting up out of the hips to stretch your legs. Good. One more time. Bend. And lift. And high release. And up. Now we're going to keep our body vertical. As you come through demi plie, arms go forward. Grand plie. Press your knees open. The heels can lift. They may separate a little bit, but keep that feeling like you're trying to drag them together from your inner thighs. Good. Now go straight up with the head, straight in with the belly. Arms stay fifth in front, come back to plie. And then as you inhale, yes, yeah, good. Keep the tailbone under, bring the arms out to the side. Take a little lift from underneath the armpits. Now the arms come down as you grow on plie. Brush your pinkies against the inner thighs as you lower. Keep your focus vertical. Now bum under, hands forward as you lift back up into plie. Tailbone under right there, push those heels down as soon as you can. And then stretch the arms out to the side. One more time, lift from the underarms. Feel how the arms can help you maintain that sense of buoyancy. And then let them help you lift. And then open that up. Good, lift your arms, hinge from the hips, pour the bra forward. Dive all the way down, like you're gathering a basket of flowers beneath you. And then roll up, looking into the stomach, arms overhead as you stand up. Arms fifth high, up overhead. And then just take a little high release, open the arms to that open V. Come up to center. And again, lift. Dive forward, your hands gather down. Try not to lean back, push your calves together and forward. Roll that up. Squeeze those inner thighs in by your knees. And then lift up and open. Back to center one more time. Keep that rotation of the heads of the thighs. Lift the sits bone as you dive forward. Engage your back. Roll it up. Corkscrew those thighs forward and together. 
Good. And then lift it up. High release. Back to center. Step one foot out and then the other. Second position. Feet about one and a half foot's length apart. Mm -hmm. Good. And then from there, again, that same idea. Just right into grand play. Lift your elbows. The heels will stay down. Lower the arms. Separate the feet a little bit wider. Yeah, good. And then up through that demi position. And then straighten the arms that come out to the sides. Lift from the underarms and find that liquid of the arms. Bend. Body stays vertical. Lower the hips in line with the knees. All right, there. Scoop the stomach in. Lift up halfway. Arms go forward. And then they present out to the sides. One more time. How can you imbue this movement now with the sense of ritual? Maybe there's something that you're working on, again, collecting and then releasing out into the world. Good. Now, core de bras to the side. Keep feeling your thigh bones rotate forward and your kneecaps away from it. Lift your kneecaps. Bring your arm to mirror you. Bring your right arm overhead, the left arm down by your waist. Curl the fingertips in a little bit. And then look over the left shoulder and side bend. As you come back up, the arms go through fifth and front. So meet the fingertips together in front of you. And then open to the sides. Thumbs in. And now point of to the other side. Right arm down. Side bend over to the right. Keep your weight even. Go straight back up. Hands to fifth and front. And then out to the side. Now we'll add. As you go over to the right, to me left, bend your right knee. Now, as you come forward now into fifth and front, you're going to go into that contraction place. Bend the knees, grand plie. Straightening just the left leg, reach over to the right, left arm overhead, and then back up, standing second position. And again, same direction, right knee bend, right arm over. Go, go through that big contracted second position like you're ripped around and over a barrel with your bum under. Stretch the other right leg out there, and then come back up. One more time, keep your balance. Now again here, let the arms guide you. Stretch the right leg and come back up. Reverse. Left arm up, left knee bends. Contract forward, stomach and ribs in. Straighten out the left leg, look over the left shoulder and come back up. And again, bend. Bend both knees. Straighten the left. And open. Good. Come back to center. Lift up, elevate. Keep pushing your heels forward. Hands into high V. And maybe add that high release. Don't let those ankles go forward. Keep driving them forward from the back of the inner thighs. Soften the shoulders. Reach out through that V position, that high X position we started. And then bend your knees, lower the arms, and just, yeah, shake that out. <laughs> Good. Let that move a little bit. Shake out your legs. Good. And if you want to, go ahead and just shake one foot out at a time. It's a lot more ankle work than it seems like. That's what I love about that stabilizing. So now, keep that in mind. Bring your feet together. And let's just take that little parallel work, but first find your turning. Take that little demi-plie. Now for the whole zipper of the legs from heels to inner thighs as you stretch, keep that feeling. Rotate your big toes in. You'll have to, of course, let go a little bit. It's a different mechanism, but now, Feel the sensation of those inner thighs and kneecaps almost pressing in and together. And then lift up and out of the outside of your hips for Vikshasana. Bring your right knee in towards your chest. Wrap your hands around that foot if you want to. Circle the ankle to free up the foot a little bit there. Standing inner thigh back and in, just like when you're laying down. Open the knee out to the side. Pause there for a moment. Reach the other arm out. Look over that arm. Good, bring your arm and your knee forward once again. Change hands, swing the right arm back, twist. Try not to twist from the knee, just from the torso. Good, both hands onto your knee one more time. Knee opens out to the side with the aid woo, of that right arm. And then bring your heel above or below that standing thigh. Press your two legs against one another and then work on finding your balance. Bring your arms out to the side. And then just take a little dancing flow. Side bend over. Come back up. Or just stay vertical. That's enough for you today. And then over, pour de bras to the other direction. And come back up. Good. Hands fold into prayer positions. Hips press forward. Lift up out of the lower back. 
drop the right side of your buttocks down and under. Good, right knee in, give it a hug one more time. And just step your foot down and just pedal through the ankles a few times to relieve the burn in the standing foot. And then feet together. Feel that core screen of your inner thighs in, but then the wrap of the buttocks back. Just really lightly though, but you're not ripping the glutes. It should be enough just to feel like you're lifting up, not kind of crunching down. Keep feeling that spiral root of your right leg in as the left leg starts to come up. Just catch a hold of your shin. From the hip line, think of lifting your body weight up and forward a little bit. And then take the knee out to the side, reaching your right arm out. And just take a moment there, lifting up and stretching forward through the chest. You can gaze over that hand if you'd like to play with your balance. And then arm and leg coordinate forward, change hands. Peel, our theme for today, peel that arm back. Lift up the standing side. And then swing that arm forward, transfer one more time to the opposite hand. Very little weight there. And then bring your heel above or below the standing leg, Vrachasana. Bring the arms out wide. Again, lift up to that standing hip. And then take a little side bend, quarter bra over towards your legs. Again, really working from your center. Come back up and up and over to the other side. Come back up, hands to prayer. Final few breaths here. Good. Bring the left leg forward, give it a hug one more time. And then step your foot down. And if you wanna pedal the feet a few times here, I'm just stretching out the balls of the feet. Good. From there, take up all the way up onto the right toes. So here, I'm going to actually switch legs. So lift up onto the ball of the right to toes, up to onto the toes. And then just take some little toe circles. Moving again. Again, very little weight in that leg. That's lifted. The majority is in your standing. And then reverse those little ankle circles. And then just step that butt leg back into a little lunge. And you're just going to open up the foot and the Achilles by making sure that back leg is parallel. Mm -hmm. Good. And then step the right foot forward to join the left and just on the other side. Pop up onto the ball of the left foot. Come up onto the tiptoes and little toe circles there. Think of the relationship of the rest of your body to this action. Make sure you go in both directions with your toes and your foot. And then to step that foot back into like a small lunge and really focusing on opening up the back line. Look at your back leg, make sure it's parallel. <laughs> yeah, I, I find it so interesting that relationship to what we think is going on in the actuality some days. Good, and then step your feet forward. Right. From there now, you're going to turn out into first position. Come forward a little bit near the front of the mat and step the right leg back now into almost like a turned out warrior two. Mm -hmm. So this front lunge position, your ballet lunge, two hips forward like headlights. And then you're going to use the front thigh to externally rotate and press forward with your hips. Only as much as you can keep that feeling of lift. The back leg's very similar to warrior one. Bring your arms to the front. Arabesque, right arm forward, right arm, excuse me, out to the side, left arm forward, first arabesque. Palms face down, chest lifts. Now bring your arms forward like you're gathering something into the other arm. You're reaching the left arm back and the right arm forward like you're reaching for something to set a breath. Bring the arms together, fifth in front. Left hand high, right arm to shoulder level. Peek out over the right shoulder, third arabesque. Bring that all the way together. And now step up using that left inner thigh and bring the right toes into passe, all the way up to the left inner thigh. Now, unlike tree, there's very little weight there. Yes, good. Now keep pulling everything in. Spiral the right hip back, left hip forward. Keep lifting up on that left side and maybe play with your relevant back. <laughs> and if you have something stable to help you, you're welcome to find a use of the bar or the wall, like a, usually like a chair right now, or the couch. Keep using your back, chest forward, pull everything in the midline. And then lower that down. And just take a little play. Whew. Yes, work that out a little. And then step the left leg back. And again, your externally rotated lunge. 
almost a similar length to like warrior one, warrior two. And again, you're feeling that back leg is extending from your hip. The front leg is turning out from the head of the thigh. And you're pressing and bending that knee forward, but out to the side. So lift your right arches a little bit. Uh-huh, exactly. Bring your arms fifth in front. Arabesque foot, right arm forward, left arm back, palms facing down. And gaze over that right middle finger. Breathe and pull the hands back together, fifth in front. Second arabesque, reaching the left arm forward, right arm back. Pull the abdominals in, reach like you're reaching for something just out of breath. Fold the hands back together, third arabesque. Right arm to head height, left arm to shoulder height. And then look over that left shoulder. Bring your hands back together. And again, think about scooping under the standing hip. Bring your left foot up to the right inner thigh, passe. Toes barely touch the inner part of the left or right knee. Keep lifting your body weight forward, spiraling the inner thighs forward, your hips open. And then see if you can just start to find that feeling just pulling in and into the midline so much that you start to be able to lift your standing heel. And eventually, working on not tipping over. <laughs> so I think the one interesting thing that I noticed, the difference between, uh, especially the classical dance, and um, yoga is that there's not this fear of like using the wall as not cheating, but again, a wall or a bar actually really helps you to establish balance and create that neurological connection that helps your confidence. So go ahead and lower back down first position, take that plie one more time. Right, and then turn your feet to parallel, walk to the top of the mat. Standing series finishing up, eagle into dancer. Right knee over left, left arm over right. Now really work your internal rotation and feel that graceful part of rock connection to connection to your arms. Lift your elbows, send the hips down. Now again here, keep feeling that sensation of the thighs rolling in, the tailbone dropping down. Press the shoulders apart, broadening the collarbones. And then just release and swing. Right arm back to the inner or outer ankle. Now left arm, it's as if you're holding a hand mirror in your left palm. A little different variation here. You're gonna lift up, kick your foot back, and again, if this is too much, don't do it. And then reach up and back with your chest, or excuse me, with your foot, as your chest goes forward, squaring the shoulders light. Slowly come back up, see that relationship with your pelvis coming under to catch your balance. And then lower down. Ardha Surya Namaskar, inhale up. Exhale, flow it down. Feel that again, easy relationship to the arms. Ardha Uttanasana, engage the stomach. Exhale, bend the knees, roll it up. We're gonna flat back feels better, you can always do that. Swing it up. And as the hands come to prayer, Utkatasana, in the Garudasana angle. Left knee, right elbow on top. Coordinating the hands and the feet. Work in that internal rotation from our inner thigh engagement. Good, and then spiral the fingers up and your hips down and back. Soften your eyes. With that tuning fork relationship between the kind of buzz of the head and the floor. And then unbind and gracefully. Left hand reaches back, right arm, palm facing forward like you're holding a hand. And then kick up and back. Think of your back toes and your right arm connecting to a circle above you, even if that's only energetic. And then push the floor away as you come back up and float the hands down. Or drop your chin to your chest, a little head and upper back circle around. So that's easier to feel balance, you can separate the feet. And then reverse that. Put a little upper back, reverse circle. Stack yourself back up. Come to the top of the mat and inhale, swing overhead. Exhale, flow through your sun salutation. Inhale, halfway. Step or hop it back. You can make sure there's very little collapse in that lower back. Keep lifting through it. Chaturanga into cobra or upward dog. Stretch the front of your thighs here. And all the way back as you're ready, back to down dog. But turn the shoulders out and cup the armpits towards the chest as you push up and back with the hips. Spiral the heels a little further apart. 
Good. Left leg rises up. Bend the knee and open up your hip or flip your dog all the way over. Landing on the ball of the left foot, right leg straight like Vashistasana. Chest and arm are going to lift. And then chest and elbow are going to contract down, lower your hips. Keep feeling that corkscrewing of the right shoulder down the back and do that two more times. Or just hold. Lift it up. Flow through. And then here, feeling again like you're moving through something a little more viscous with your whole body. Leading with the arm. Let the next one flip you all the way back over. Three limbs down, more dog into pigeon. Left shin forward, knee turned out. Right leg parallel with the right hip behind you. Take it easy. Always wonderful. <laughs> Just stay here for the next 20 minutes. No, not wonderful. <laughs> so as you're ready to, come on down. And so just think about, right, what's that relationship between kind of like that, that deep gripping and holding on for dear life that I think many of us are experiencing, right? And see here through the pranic flow in your relationship with your breath, the sense of inner trust, if you'll feel more and more safe to unravel in those deep, 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 again, back of the pelvic muscles, especially around the sacrum around the coccyx, the tailbone. For many of us, there's this feeling of just like, oh, if I hold on there, maybe the world will fall apart. So just observe again if that feels resonant to you or any other story or iteration, how that shows up. And just observe how that most emotional sense of our body, our roots, how that informs everything else and that, that, that emotion is such creative fire but untended like a wild garden it can also just become like a real jungle and hard to navigate so taking the time every day to just check in with yourself even if you don't have any grand realizations it's often actually those small little ones consecutively and regularly help that you need to cope and give me little landmarks throughout the day to return to. And then slowly come on back up, scoot your back knee in, pull the left heel in if it was quite parallel, and then bending your back knee and either stay like that or reaching for the inside or outside the foot. And if that doesn't feel good for your back, you can stay down. And then working towards full brush kapatasana here, lift the left arm, bend the elbow, and hook your elbow to the inside of your foot eventually. But again, that might be a lot on the lower back. So keep lifting to the stomach with the right hip parallel forward. Good. So more right side forward. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And then slowly release that. Sit over to your right hip. Turn out to the left. Or I'm sorry, the other way around for you. So right leg turns out. Mm -hmm. Perfect, John. You share Shasta. Just make sure that that left heel now is really anchored in towards the right groin. Sit as tall as you can, bring your arms out side to side. And then just an easy little port de bras over to the bent knee, just your hand down for a moment, bend your elbow. So away from the extended leg. And then come back up and you'll just go back and forth side to side. Tune in to the alignment of the right leg. Middle of the sits bones, middle of the knee socket there, middle of the calf, and middle of the right heel, nice and stable. And as you move, notice where the tension points are. See if you can breathe through them. Shoulders away from the ears, arms fluid. And the next time you go over to your long extended legs, stay there. Spiral the little finger at the top hand inward toward the floor. Roll the chest and armpit open. And then little by little, every time you inhale, go up through the low stomach. And every time you go exhale, feel that fluid flow through the top of your head and fingers. So there's going to be like little miniature waves. Inhale, lengthen your body in that side bend. And then exhale, let yourself fall into it a little bit. Stomach pulling to back, lower back pulling up to stomach. Yes. Without looking up, just send the skull slightly backward. Palm. Yeah, good. And then see if you can stretch a little bit. Thank 
Good. When you're ready, slowly left arm reaches back the way you came. Drag yourself back up. And just tent up onto the fingertips on either side of your hips. And then here again, feel the kind of drainage points between the arms, the pelvic floor, the ground, all the way through the layers of your building into the earth itself. Parigasana, bring the left hand to the top corner of your mat, your right turn, toes turn in, you push up onto that left knee, pressing the hips forward, the chest open. And again, here, think less pushing the hips forward, more lengthening your pelvis away from the chest, and vice versa. Carefully cartwheel yourself back down, lift the left knee into your chest. And when you're ready, extend that out. Optional vinyasa before we take the other side. And then right leg lifts, bend at the knee and open up your hip. And again, stay here or flip your dog all the way over. Take that moment to establish shoulder and bottom leg. And then touch hip, hip, excuse me, and arm up and over. Plug that left shoulder blade down the back like you're turning a pickle jar to the left. Good. And then elbow and knee connect in towards you, lower the hips a little bit. And then re extend that back up. Good. Contract the elbow and shoe waist, look down towards your stomach, pull it in. And then push the floor away with the other three limbs. Good. Last one, just flip your dog over, curl that in, and feel that as a coiling power as you spring back in the three limb down dog. And then right shin forward, Akapataraj Kapatasana, and walk that left leg away. Let's take a moment there just to lift, breathe. And when you're ready, go ahead and come forward. Especially how wonderfully internal this posture already is. Let the cueing of the pose and the medicine of the pose turn you inward and breathe. Feel those through lines of the nadis opening up, the checks out of body channels, awakening, clearing out. Tension, stress, pain, fear. And even if it feels a little bit sometimes stick it till you make it, replace that or offer almost like a blood transfusion feeling of flesh in the blood. A sense of new, vital, filled with energy, filled with potential. And when you're ever you're ready, go ahead and come back up. And again, if you prefer not to do the quad stretch, you don't have to, you can stay forward. Otherwise, scoot the back knee in a little bit. Same arm as leg reaches for the left foot. And you here work that from those inner thighs, like a lunge, that pelvic floor feeling of squeezing in and back. So that keeps the sacrum open rather than people crunching by overstaying the front body. It only took me like a decade to actually figure that out. So <laughs> don't worry if again, it feels so a little foreign, and then working on hooking the inside of your leg with your foot, raising the right arm up, chin mudra, and then maybe connect the hands and lift that up and back. And then come on down and turn yourself open now to the left, spin around. And from there again, Parvita Janusha Shasana, Right heel to left in our thigh. Take a look and make sure that the left heel, center of the knee joint, and center of that sits bone are as square as possible. And then reach away from your extended leg and just little side bend over. And then float that back up. Keep working through the mid section as you go up and over. Take it easy on the first few. Let this be a warm up. Work the spinal muscles. Let the head go along for the ride in the long lateral wing. And then just feeling that foundation. And then last one, bring yourself all the way over to the long side of the leg. And again here, try it first. Push your left hand against your shin a little bit, Tom. And then lift and spiral the ribs open and back, but not the arm. Yes. 
Now feel that kind of as your barometer, keeping that inner strength, little by little start to stretch that out and over. Keep feeling that relationship of lifting out of the lower back, but rooting down from the sits bones. And just scan here, notice where the upper body will want to take over that enthusiasm and then drop it back down a little low. Feel the arm reaching connect because it's connected into the sides and into your back. And see if that gives you a little more reach to open up the top of the quadrasum borum, the back side of the obliques, and all that way thick myofascia around the lower back that keeps the spine stable. Slowly bring the right arm back in the direction you came and then drag yourself up super smoothly. Take your fingertips behind you. Let the power of that side bend digest. And then when you're ready, Parigasana. Right hand to the top corner of your mat. Left toes turn in. Push up onto the bottom knee. And again here, as much as you're pressing forward, you're lifting up and in. Tailbone long and stretch that out. Last time, spiral yourself back down. You need to adjust yourself, hugging your right knee into the nose, nose to knee. And then extend that back out. Last time, vinyasa. Inhale forward. Exhale through your chaturanga. Inhale, Ordha Mukha. And exhale, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Uh, float up and over the toes. Knees down. Sit back. Child's pose, Balasana. Spin the palms up. Soften. And offering almost again like you're, you have a little offering within your palms. Offer up to the universe your practice. Connect to Mother Earth beneath. And let these large global and cosmic forces help to put into perspective all of our little human worries, not to marginalize or minimalize them, but just to give a sense of space, of time, perspective. And then giving yourself the gift of that cradle within, of that emotional home base. Mm -hmm. Soften through the front line of your pelvis. Soften through the diaphragm. Breathe a little more fully into the heart. And finally, allow the weight of the brain, the mind, to let go. Whenever you're ready, slowly roll yourself up to kneeling. It could be in one breath, it could be in ten. Let's just walk the knees together. Separate the heels a little bit wider. You're always welcome to use a pillow or block for Virasana. Otherwise, keep your calves a little bit in the way. And then day by day, then moment by moment, then the calves being in the way as opposed to moving them will help you to find that internal rotation of your thighs. And then just hands on the thighs or in your lap. Lift your back up vertical. Close your eyes and bring your attention inward and upward to the third eye. And as long as it feels okay in your knees, you are hugging the inner thighs in and pointing the toes into the ground. But then see if you can broaden and really relax around the back side of your pelvis. So the pelvic bones separate and the tailbone down and you can dangle a little bit. Chest lifts and rolls open. Feel that connection between our roots, our belly, our heart, our mind, the heavens above and the earth below. And 
very slowly press yourself back up and out of this position. If you need a down dog, you're welcome to just to take that tension out of the knees. Otherwise, cross your ankles and step or jump to come all the way, sit all the way forward. He's extending the legs out into Dandasana. Staff pose, push your palms down by the sides, the leg actively in a little bit of internal rotation. And without popping the heels up, working on that feeling that you're stretching out from behind the knees by lifting up out of your lower back. And then find that sense of expansion through the chest. Swing the arms up overhead, turn the palms to face in. And then you're just going to reach forward. You're not gonna go all the way down, pull the stomach in. Now swing the arms back, the elbows may need to bend. And then reach arms up, forward, and around. And again, the elbows bend. Reach back wide, up, forward, and around, almost like a butterfly, stroke and swing. And do that one more time, bend back, up and around. This time, lift your chest, and exhale, float it down. If you can, hands to the tops of each foot. The feet can be open a little bit, hip distance. And again, that same thing, spiral the inner thighs in. And then think of pushing up and back from the outsides of the sits bones to create a little more space there. Ripple the spine up, pull the abdominals in, ripple back down three times. Work the alignment of the legs. And then feel how the spine can help you to deepen into the fold of both the torso and along the back of the legs. Stay forward into Pachimottanasana. See if you can transfer your hands down to the outer edges of the feet. Bend the biceps, or excuse me, the elbows in by your sides and hug your biceps in by your shins. Keep squeezing the arms inward and physically kick the legs out from the hips to the heels, laterally outward for abduction. Spread the sacrum, pull the stomach up. Exhale, deepen into that head, drop your head between the calves. And then lift yourself just up a little bit away from the legs. Pull the stomach in. So you're going to really try to feel this feeling of like a fish hook in the belly button pulling in and back. Now point your toes and reach your arms forward and start to roll back slowly. Now again, if this bothers your lower back, keep your knees bent and don't go all the way down. Otherwise, keep squeezing the stomach, squeeze the buns, and keep that stomach strong as you reach back. And then up to the ceiling. Again, here you can catch behind the thighs. Now squeeze your butt, pull the stomach in, and round up, lifting like you're cresting wave. And then point your toes and reach forward. Roll back as if there's a lasso at the waist. Now watch here again, those little subtle movements of right to left, and try to roll down slowly and evenly along the back. Curl up, inhale, halfway. Exhale, squeeze the bottom, pull the stomach and reach you up and forward. Pull the ribs and send the head and chest forward and down. And then roll it back. If you want to challenge yourself, keep your arms back more. Keep your thighs rooting. And one more time for this long, delicious massage of the roll up. Round and reach. Pull the ribs into your back and lift up out of the low spine muscle. Roll that back, hips under as soon as you can. Plant your heels, use your stomach. And then stay on the mat. If you want to adjust yourself so your head is on, sometimes a little journey happens there. <laughs> and then finding your way all the way down. Extend the arms and legs back into Shavasana. And as we bookend our practice with laying, Observe the difference from when you first began. And taking some strong breaths, feeling once more the contrast between the lift and the surrender. Tapping into Shishumana Nadi, second chronic spine, just in front of the physical one, running from the pelvic floor through your body, through the crown of your head. 
and then the spokes of all energy centers, similar to the cardiovascular system and train. We have the limbs branching out to smaller and smaller tributaries. Send your healing breath to any regions that could use a little bit more of that herb and that palm. And then very lightly start to move the fingers and the toes, awaken the wrists and the ankles. And then gather the knees into your chest. Just take a little rock here from side to side. And then either rocking and rolling front to back or roll over to one side and make your way up to stand. Come into first position, we finish with our grand reverence. Make the circle with your arms, wait a little forward, inhale, arms forward, out to the side, lift the elbows and lower down. And again, just as if you were sharing with the world, your sense of gratitude, giving, and the humble receiver. Step to the right. Cross the left ankle behind the right. Bend both knees like you're gathering wildflowers, lifting them up, and then present them up. Do the other side, step out. Right foot crosses behind the left, curtsy, lower. Pick that back up and over. Step again to first position. Lower the arms. Cross the elbows and lift the arms. And then lift up, open up. As the arms come down, just parallel your feet. Bring one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly. Close your eyes for just a moment longer and send out any prayers or wishes. An opportunity to reflect in gratitude upon the many gifts of our life. I'm just holding the hands to prayer. Namaste. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that 